Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi, babe. How you doing? Okay. Right. Good. Good. This is um, why adapting is too wrong, which is like, if you're arguing with somebody, you say that is not wrong, and then you say it is too wrong. It's like that. <laughs> Adapting it's like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's not that adapting is too wrong. It's that adapting is too like wrong. also. Like also, exactly. Okay, I get it. Okay, good. Okay, so yeah. what are you doing with this whole thing? You're make, gonna be. I'm gonna, gonna make be, you wrong. Okay, great. Yeah. That's Warning: You should never adapt. For instance, adapting is often fatal. Fatal. Adaption is also the leading cause of species going extinct. Like, think of any species that ever has gone extinct. There you go, right there. Woolly mammoths. Adapting is what brought down the USSR and Napoleon. They can't even see my finger. I'm pointing, and you can't even see it. The USSR and Napoleon, and let's just start over, and the Mayan Empire and Enron and AIG and Yugo an LTCM. Who is LTCM? Hedge fund. It's it's, it's not it's a hedge even. Fund. Okay. I mean, there, it isn't anymore because it's gone. Mm. It's famous. And the Houston Oilers adaption brought them down. Down. To the ground. Instead of adapting, you should keep complaining about how other people should adapt, but haven't yet. For instance, certain politicians should be how they are not. Also, certain foreigners obviously should be how they are not. Obviously. In particular, thank you for your contribution. In particular, foreign politicians should not be foreign politicians. Clearly, they should all suddenly quit politics and immediately move to wherever you live, <laughs> no matter where that is. Yes, all of them. <laughs> yes. Further, further, several other people in particular should adapt. Who? Starting with your grandparents, your parents, children, spouse, ex-spouse, neighbors, co-workers, classmates, casual acquaintances, people who speak with this accent right here. This isn't how I normally talk. I don't know what it's about. <laughs> but also, the media, teachers... Unions, minorities, majorities, and now that I think about it, absolutely everyone else but you, personally. Mm -hmm. Again, you should not adapt. Not now, not in the past, and certainly not in the future. You, could, you probably knew I was going to say that. I did. It's predictable. According to licensed government statisticians, survey says, adapting is the root of 120% of the evil in the world today. 120. Also, a recent survey of a random sample of four really cute caterpillars <laughs> indicate that caterpillars universally condemn adapting. And, according to the same licensed government statisticians, caterpillars are infallible, especially the cute ones. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> In conclusion, and we're about like 20% through. Oh, In goodness. conclusion... Beware of conspiracy theorists who allege that adapting is adaptive. Nothing could be further from the truth. Adapting is immoral, illegal, <laughs> sinful, and completely ineffective. Adapting is a leading cause of yelling. No. Um, adapting is a leading cause of several incurable diseases, such as scurvy, hypochondria, dehydration, Leprosy, obesity, public intoxication, ugliness, multiple orgasms, and drowning in self-pity. Which is almost as bad as like drowning in a pool of vomit. If you are forced by unavoidable circumstances to eventually adapt, at least make sure that you are the very last one to do so, please. I mean, otherwise you're going to have to like do something different when things stop working, and that's just freaking silly. Why are you talking like <laughs> People who adapt early tend to benefit most, and that is the too wrong thing to do. Your adapting could drag other innocent people 
into an addiction to adapting, condemning you to an eternity of punishment in hell, Sinky Finland. <laughs> Always avoid focusing on identifying relevant changes. If something is changing and you notice that it is changing, immediately pretend that nothing is ever changing. Immediately. Immediately mm. and suddenly. Therefore, the following mm. sequence of sounds is explicitly forbidden to be spoken. I'm going to let you speak it because I don't want to <laughs> incur that kind of curse. Um, please, I beg of you, forgive me or her for traumatizing you with the following quotation of somebody who obviously has no credibility whatsoever. It's just a quote. It's just, it's, it's just a quote. It's the bold thing. Okay. You want to do it? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Focus on identifying relevant changes. So, Notice early. Adapt first. Benefit most. Me. That is the most, all that is the most ridiculous bunch of bunch of pig poop I've ever heard. Note that the author of that statement was probably the notorious mortal enemy of all people fluent in the English language, Dr. Hubbard, who was a geologist with the USGS. What's USGS? Uni 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 United States Geological Survey. Oh. He, that's why he was a geologist, because it was the United States Geological Survey. So, Dr. Hubbard, he's like the notorious mortal enemy of all people fluent in the English language. I don't know if you knew that. No. He computed in the 1950s a series of mathematical projections about when the United States would peak in its production of crude oil. However, he was off by nearly an entire year. So all his other calculations can be easily dismissed as naive and ignorant and adaptive. Okay, maybe he was not off exactly by nearly an entire year, but he did not specify the specific exact date and time of the peaking of U.S. oil production. So his vague estimates about the peak of oil discovery worldwide being somehow related to the peak of oil extraction and refining are clearly the insane ramblings of a raving mad manic Unlike this conversation. Even though those calculations have also been recently established as true. Yes. Was that like, you have no idea. I was that was that Was that like, you trying to put me down? No. Some kind of insulting? No. Okay, because I don't have any, I can't stand for that. I'll get all argumentative. <laughs> but his speculations, that's, that's Dr. Hubbard's. His speculation, I don't know, he was not a medical doctor. He was like, you know, PhD in geophysics or geology or something. Anyway. His speculations about how global demand for crude oil would continue rising exponentially while new supplies of refined crude oil plateaued and then fell, that's clearly impossible. 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 Further, prices just cannot change all of a sudden based on obviously unrelated factors such as supply and demand. That is just plain <laughs> silly. Dr. Hubbard, in his extreme arrogance... <laughs> apparently did not realize that politicians could simply alter the geological facts to rescue humanity from economics by occasionally tripling the amount of crude oil on the planet. Tripling, that's right, tripling the amount of crude oil on the planet with the stroke of a pen. Uh. Or even just by clicking the submit button on their computers. Don't touch. Careful. Um, further, the Federal Reserve has publicly promised with a written guarantee, signed, dated, notarized and stamped with a first grade gold star sticker to intervene and rescue the USSR, the EU, and the Mayan Empire from the rising costs of non-renewable fossil fuels as global reserves are depleted faster and faster by advancing technology such as disk drives. Ah. It's the disk drives that allow for the, the Arabians to diminish global supplies of oil faster than in the 1920s and 30s. Disk drives. And you know who invented disk drives? It was the Japanese. And they were our enemies in World War One. Yes. So, budgets of businesses, households, and governments worldwide that are in no way affected by rising fuel prices will all be bailed out by AIG's insurance policies which are backed by the full faith and credit of the USSR and the entire League of Nations. It doesn't sound right. In summary, 
Dr. Hubbard was wrong. And just because he implied that crude oil deposits could be correlated to things like economic prosperity, military power, and geopolitical prominence, the simple and clear facts are that the U.S. and USSR rose to power not because they were the biggest and second biggest producers of oil on the planet in the 20th century, but because they both shared one unique quality in common. Can I say it? Yes. Cheese. Cheese, that's right, cheese. It's like when you have a photograph taken of you and stuff. Further, the increasing geopolitical influence of Saudi Arabia and other areas of the Middle East that just coincidentally happened to have most of the rest of the crude oil uh, on the planet that's left. Well, it's also exclusively attributable not just to cheese in general, but to shredded cheese in particular. Oh, that's correct. All that the rest of the world needs to do to easily avert any changes whatsoever from ever happening is, of course, to shred their cheese just like the Arabs do. That way, they will not only be adaptive, but they will be adaptive without at all adapting. This, and only this, assures the very best of all impossible outcomes, according to the same licensed government categories. And next time that the gas tank of your automotive vehicle is nearly empty, Remember to urgently call your elected caterpillar, yes, even if it is the middle of baseball season, and scream antagonistic demands in a language that, that, that's foreign to them, <laughs> that they intelligently adapt on behalf of your abdicated complacency by passing a law or a treaty or a constitutional amendment if, if you know, they're smart. Lord. That your gas tank will magically refill instantly for every time it is half full. See? For free. It just refills. Whenever it gets half full, boom, it's, it's refilled all the way. It's because they have the magic pens and the magic submit keys on their computers. With all expenses of this whole, like, refueling process paid by our fair weather friends at the infallible insurance company AIG, which is permanently reliable because they have nearly twice as much money as they actually have. In conclusion, if 10 people who are skilled at mountain climbing attach themselves to each other and then climb a mountain together, they are obviously stupid and deserve to die slow and horribly painful deaths for gambling their lives on trusting nine other competent mountain climbers to each act in their own self-interest. You get what I'm saying? In contrast, if millions or maybe billions of people all blame caterpillars for being way too adaptive, why shouldn't I? That's obviously only because when millions of people with no skill at mountain climbing all attach themselves to each other to climb a mountain together, they can count on the USSR and AIG to save them from gravity. That is, of course, because one of them once read a book on mountain climbing. That's right. And has an advanced degree in treating incurable ill will by not adapting ever. Okay, so I guess everyone noticed that I didn't say much. I actually didn't say much either, but that's a different subject.